Greetings and welcome to the Hamptons. My name is Sandra Kay. With enormous pleasure and great pride, I am delighted to introduce you to my guest today, Kelly <laughs> Connaughton Dodds, the president and co-artistic director of our beloved Sag Harbor American Music Festival. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Pleasure for you to be here. This is great. I'm so excited. Yes. Well, okay. Kelly, you and I, we met at Hamptons Hot Yoga in Bridgehampton. <laughs> yes, we did. And uh, we started to chat. And lo and behold, I find out that you are the creator and the founder of this incredible music festival going on its 14th year. Thank you. Yeah. Please share with us your artistic background, your musical background, and what may have inspired you to create this festival for local musicians and the Sag Harbor community at large? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I think it's it's um, it's hilarious the how we met. Yes. And that we knew each other for almost a year. And, yes. And then we finally connected, and it's just been wonderful getting to know you. And I, thank you again for inviting me onto the show. And um, so... The music festival, the Sag Harbor American Music Festival, um, began as a thought about 15 years ago. Um, I had just moved back to the east end of Long Island, and um, my background is in music. And um, I had so. You I know you me, had told me that you had worked in LA yes, after college. I did, I did. So I was, you know, pretty much born and raised a musician. I sang. Uh, I sang, I danced, I played the cello, the viola, the tenor sax. Um, I just, I just love to be a part of musical ensembles, whatever it was. And um, so that love of music led me to go to school. I went to Syracuse University, um, and I was a vocal performance major. But I learned really quickly that I wasn't, I didn't want to be a performer, like as my career. But I had this, I don't know. I, somehow I became the musical director for a student run production in my freshman year. Okay. And that really just sort of like crystallized for me where, what worked, like having that background and knowing and understanding where musicians come from and being able to coordinate, um, you know, from the musical aspect, but also just logistically, it's putting together a big puzzle. Sure. You know, so uh, in LA, I worked for the Henry Mancini Institute for many years, seven years to be exact. And, and did you there do what the Sag Harbor Music Festival is in terms of organization? Did you have that role? Well, I have. I was the executive director there, and I. But I started out, um, you know, organizing their summer music festival. So that's kind of, you know, it definitely was an inspiration for our music festival, at least an element of it. Okay. Uh, the Mancini Institute had an 80-piece orchestra and uh, brought in students from around the world for eight weeks at UCLA um, free of charge. And it was also a nonprofit. And it also focused on um, the importance of live music and accessible live music. Yes, you had spoken to me about that, how yeah. you want to share with yeah. the community live yeah, music absolutely. free. Yes, so at Mancini, we put on those like about eight concerts at Royce Hall at UCLA. All of them were free to the public. And we had like incredible big name guest artists like Randy Brecker, Christian McBride, um, mostly in the jazz world. So um, I definitely have a background in jazz. And my partner in the music festival today is Carrie Farrell, who he's my partner in the festival, not in life. I say okay. that because people always think right. we're married. Right. Um, but he and I have known each other for many, many years and worked at the festival the, in Man the Mancini Institute uh, together. And he moved back to New York um, just when I was, this idea was incubating. I was meeting okay. with members of the community and sort of talking it through from a business angle. And, you know, musically, I saw that we had what we needed. Okay. You know, I mean, we bring in some regional artists, but there's a lot of incredible local talent. Well, this is a four day event. Yes. With yes. Uh, what, 38 bands? Or 42 to be 42. exact. 42. Yes. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. And you organized this. Yeah. This is really monumental. Thank you. It started out a little smaller. It was two days and 20 acts. So well, I'd like to ask you, talk to us about American music. What does American music mean? 
Well, for us, the reason why we made it part of uh, the name of the festival is because um, to celebrate what is known as American roots music, blues, jazz, folk, country, gospel, you know, there's so many elements of music within the United States that are um, unique to our the mix of cultures that we have here and those styles of music are revered around the world but oftentimes americans don't understand how unique that this kind of music is and that it comes from you know our background and the heritage that we have here of this the commingling of all these different musical heritages you know mixing together so we feature you know we make sure carrie and i make sure we program something from every genre i mean you can't do every single genre but we we get at least all of the um, the main roots music. Which include? Blues, jazz, you know, bluegrass, folk. Country. Country, country absolutely. Rock. rock. And then there's fusion, which if you don't know what that means, it's really fusion is, um, there's so much blending of musical styles, especially uh, in pop music today and in singer-songwriters today. Um, you know, they'll say, I'm country alternative, but with pop sensibilities and folk style, you know, so there's a, we have all kinds of mixes going on. And uh, what I think is unique about our festival is that it's extremely accessible in that our three main stages are on the waterfront, uh, two on the waterfront, one is in the alley next to the American Hotel, and um, people can just stroll by and stop. So if you have kids and they're acting up, you don't have to, you know, shush them. It's a part of and the restaurants connection. are part of the yes. whole uh, many the event. first opening night we have the restaurant connection on Thursdays for that soft launch right. and um, then of course we have Teddy Thompson at the right. Street Theater on Friday. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're going to just though I'd like to we're going to hear from some of our local musicians Great. and uh, hear from the community to see what we're in store for and then we'll get into more depth about what we're going to look forward to September 26th to the 29th. Jody, please, let's go to the uh, video. We're here at the Sag Harbor American Music Festival, and I really dig it. Come next year. This is it. This is our artists in our time, in our town. It really, uh, it warms my heart. It's, it's really so important. This one's really special to us. Th this is what we missed for two years. It really means a lot. We love it. We look forward to it every year. I'd do this every week if I could. This festival, unlike many, is about the community, about musicians and artists. It's just such a diversity of great American music and a lot of it is being featured at this wonderful festival. The fact that we survived the pandemic and we get to do what we love and share love and joy with everyone through music is just special. For a musician like myself, just to, to see the sheer enthusiasm and support, you know, I cannot live without folks like this that come out and really, uh, really appreciate what we're doing. The community dives in and, and shares. And the organizers do a great job of providing great locations for each of the bands and it really spreads out the foot traffic across all the great parts of town. Yeah. It's free, it's like, it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's great to gather the kids together and then the parents have an excuse to stick around afterwards, right? And there's something for everyone. We're recovering right now. And so to bring this joy and this music back into this town, it ticks off everything on, on the list. And when I heard the other day that it was completely non-for-profit, that nobody gets paid, and that all the money go back into the stages and the musicians, I was blown away. The festival doesn't charge for a single thing. So any chance you have to buy a ticket or an auction, raffle, uh, do it. This festival, if you're gonna donate to anything and this is your home, this is worth it. For me, this is really where you throw your money and your talent and your time. Anybody who came out to uh, Sag Harbor Music Festival, thank you so much. To from us local musicians, uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude. That is so great. Thank it really you. is great. So let's talk about this year. Yeah. Thursday night, opening night. MASH Park. Yes, so MASH Park, MASH Hashemuit Park, okay. for anyone who's wondering. Um, we just call it MASH Park, it's easier. Okay. So um, at five o'clock, we're gonna kick off with Escola de Samba Boom, which is a 30 piece Brazilian drum ensemble, otherwise known as the drum circle at the Fantastic. beach on Monday night. Right? Unbelievable, for you that locals. is great. So um, they will be kicking off at the grandstand. And for kids, we have like, you know, egg shakers and think we're gonna give away a lot of fun things like ribbons and things to encourage them to be a part of the percussive like element and play and 
dance, and it's really just going to be a party. Okay. And now, is this also the signature night of restaurants? Yes, the restaurant night. So okay. um, it's on a Thursday. So, you know, in the beginning, we didn't do Thursday nights in the beginning of the festival. But because it's gotten, I mean, September 14 years ago was a little quiet. Not so much these days. So the weekends became to be just a little too hectic for the restaurants. So we're doing the Thursday. And um, they're doing some, spe like the SAG Pizza has some special event happening. with, And hopefully Forgiven is performing there. And uh, Sen has Cameron Quinlan. And we have Bobby Murray at uh, Que Pasa. Tuto de Jorn. Yeah, Tuto oh, Il Jorn. Oh. Yes, that's um, Ludmilla Brazil trio. That's going to be very fun. And um, we also have the Bell Curves that are going to close out the night at Kid Squid, which Fantastic. is one of our supporting partners. How exciting. And lots more than that, too. Sure. Chloe Halpin at the church. And, you know, we have... So much Incredible happening. performers, aspiring artists, artists that are local to the community, established artists. Yes. We can all look forward to. Oh, yes, the back page. I'm sorry. Yes. I, we have certain could, moves at the back, back page. page. I, I love certain moves. That. They're great. Yeah. They're great. Really They're, I love them all. Um, and then on uh, Friday night, Bay Street Theater has a really wonderful performance in store for us. Tell us about it. Yes. So um, part of the concept was for the original festival was to do this Friday night kickoff with our main artist. So Teddy Thompson is our, our you know, highlighted artist, like the headliner. And um, we're so thrilled to have him here. Uh, he's a singer-songwriter. His latest music, he's very folksy, country sort of sensitive driven and his last latest album was my love of country yes so to just to put that listening out to that the other night it's fantastic but i mean he's really a prolific like artist he's put out eight albums i think and in his the last lyrics 20 are great years. yes yeah and his voice is just comes right to the heart um and he's performed actually on the east end before so some people might remember him being part of the guitar masters um, with G.E. E. Smith or uh, with Jenny Muldauer. And uh, so he and his band are coming to perform. And to open for them, we have Sarah Gross, who is a lo local. She's from West Hampton, but we um, she performed with us last year with her band, and she is just phenomenal. Her voice is incredible. She really, she has uh, just... There's something about it. Yeah, no, there, she has an innate talent that really just wakes you up the minute she opens her mouth. You know, you're just like... Rapt attention. Well, her newest song, Better With Age, is very cool. Yeah. Just great. Yeah. And she's like, she has a lot of um, visibility in this past year also. So like, you know, she UBS was Stadium. Jimmy Fallon yeah. and she, uh, yeah, she performed no, she with Zach Bryan on stage. So it's, it's going to be a special night. You should definitely come if you have time. <laughs> yes. And Saturday, Saturday oh. is an all day event. Yes, of it music. is. Oh my gosh. Tell us about the locations, the bands. Okay. So yeah, it's Saturday, wear some comfortable shoes because it starts at 10 AM and it goes through our evening concert with the resilience at eight. So from 10 to 10, Jam packed, Sag Harbor is full of music. So, our three well, you mentioned oh, resi resilient. The resilient. Please yes. tell us about that band because they are so special. I, yes, absolutely. Yes. So, the Resilient are a band we were introduced to about three years ago, okay, um, by Jim Durning, at, who's a native Sag Harbor person and a supporter of the festival. And um, so, they are actually severely wounded veterans who, through their process of healing, met one another in music therapy. Yes. And so they were all like working on their instruments and helping, the, you know, trying to get through like the PTSD and the pain of surgeries. I mean, they've, they've been through so much. Monumental right here. We have yeah. a um, photograph of, of them and... Uh, that's a very special night. Yes. I imagine. Have you sold out for that? We haven't sold out yet. So there's okay, tickets. Okay. So to everybody, be had. Saturday night. <laughs> there's Resilient. tickets to be had. Yeah. And they performed with us two years in 2021 and 22. So local people should be familiar with them. Um, they're based out of Pennsylvania and they're actually just kicking off a tour. Um, in the coming year of, of their new album. So we are like the official launch of that new album. Okay. And, um, it's and I read also that there's going to be a documentary made. Yes, there they have. There's going to be uh, video cameras everywhere following them. They're, you know, finishing up a documentary. And they're also launching a new nonprofit called The Reborn. And they're using their experience with music. By the way, I have to say they're exceptional artists. You know, like they applied their military 
like background in the precision and the you know working. You well, know, I was going to ask you that too. Now to that we're instruments. on it, how do you select the bands? Um, it's a it's a process. So we have you know from the first years which, where we had about twenty to now where we have forty two. Um, as I mentioned, we usually have a headliner. So we always go. He, Carrie and I are the co artistic directors. Okay. So we work in tandem. And um, we draw, we you know want to focus on a particular genre from year to year. I so see. our highlighted artist has been, you know, from a blues background. We had John Hammond many years ago. It was an, a huge concert. We've had uh, John Cleary from New Orleans. We've had um, the Fairfield Four, which is a famous gospel quartet from uh, Nashville. So we've had, you know, and the, you're those... covering the gamut of the genres. Now, exactly. how do you put that together? Just to ask you, with the location, Steinbeck Park, Marine Park, yes. Nash Park, and the times that everybody's performing, what goes into that whole thought process? So I think I said before it's a bit of a puzzle, and that's okay. exactly what it is. Because first we know um, the way the festival was founded, it's a nonprofit. So we said whatever money we fundraise, that's okay. how big the festival will be. So we're never, you know, because the musicians come first, you know, 90%. Even more than that, probably 92% of our overall, um, all of the money that we raise goes towards paying musicians, the sound crews, the promotion, like all of that. We don't have a, a staff, a paid staff. Everyone's a volunteer. So um, we kind of, we have a bit of a formula and it's changed through the years. We started with, um, we always had the restaurants or storefronts and the local businesses support us. So it as the local businesses supported us more and more and with more money and more businesses, we were able to grow really So do you try to just ask you tailor the music to the given location, like the given absolutely. restaurant? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You know, we typically, um, well, now we evolved to such a state where we had these bigger bands and there wasn't a venue really to hold them because to have a big band in a restaurant is, you know, it's not really the best scenario. So we started with the alley next to the American hotel, which people, it might sound odd to you, but I have to tell you, it's a fan favorite. Everybody right. loves the alley. And I think why is because it reverberates through the entire main street. You know, when a band is playing there, it sounds like there's a party happening in the village. So it's a unique spot. And, um, you know, it's really fun. So that is underwritten by the Sag Harbor Express. Wonderful. Um, as they have for the last couple of years. And, I mean, the Sag Harbor Express has been a donor for since the beginning. And um, they serve on the board as well. Gavin Manu serves on the board. But um, they've well, been supporting have, us. Uh, a number of, which we'll, we'll still get on to, the sponsors. Which... Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of the stages are tied into the sponsorship. So we have the right. WLIW FM stage at Steinbeck Park, which is okay. under a big tent. Great. You know, like a sailcloth tent. Sure, so it's a vibe. fantastic. We have a lot of our acoustic sets happening there. Like we have the Quartet San Francisco and um, the New Moon Acoustic Trio, which is a blues trio. Really great. David Barnes is going to be in that trio of, um, he's of Sag Harbor and also a, a pretty famous blues musician in his own right. And then we have... Um, like into Eaton and then some of okay. our favorites that are going to okay. be on the main stages and uh, Gene Casey and the Lone Sharks will be there and the Hoodoo Loungers. Okay. So, Hoodoo you know, Loungers. we're with Joe we're, Lauro. We're, he's also involved, isn't he? Absolutely. Joe Lauro is on our board and he also volunteers. Every board member does their fair share of work, I have to say. And in nonprofits, that's not always the case. But we are very fortunate to have people that work. That includes Cynthia Daniels from mm -hmm. Monk Music Studios. Um, and Laura Grenning from Grenning Gallery, and we talked about Joe, and then there's Gavin and John Landis, who is also on the board of the Hamptons Jazz Fest. So nice. we have a really nice group of people, and I have to say they're fun to work with. Well, I do, it's really <laughs> incredible. I mean, when you think about how the community has come together, businesses, restaurants, volunteers, yes. to make this event happen annually, it's, it's monumental, and it speaks to... What a wonderful village Sag Harbor is. Well, I mean, truly. To your point, they really bring it to life because the festival as a concept was supported by the sponsors, which make it you know, possible right. right, to hire the musicians, to do all of that. And you had asked me, we actually started in recent years to do an application process online because so many people were sending us information. So you do have to turn away some musicians. Absolutely. Oh, many. 
many, many because okay. Carrie and I will have a concept in mind and specific artists in mind. And then there's a few spots that are open. So okay. the people that apply are only applying for those few spots. You see? Wow. Yeah. Okay. So a hundred yes, people. I yeah. For sure. So it's it's um you know we and we focus on original music. So that's something that's very oh, important. that's very important. Yeah. Yes. The artists that we hire are are producing original music and playing it out and you know selling whether it's you know digital these days or it's some putting out albums or whatnot. Um, but those are the people and you're giving that we opportunity to new artists as well. Absolutely, yeah, which no, is a wonderful thing. Yeah, to that point, we we are doing a student showcase opening up on Saturday. Okay, so, tell us about that. That is okay. exciting. Well, we um, we're working with uh, Miss Nicoletti from the high school Pearson High School in Sag Harbor. Okay, and it will be mostly Pearson students, and we have a special guest from Montauk, Faith Mullally. If you haven't heard of her, you will. Okay, she has a voice that's being channeled from some higher power i don't even know she is so will we see her will, will we see her perform absolutely she's going to okay. perform with us that's and that's saturday at 10 o'clock saturday morning 10 o'clock so yeah you asked yes, we yes. started out asking right, about, about saturday. that right we started asking about <laughs> saturday let's quickly also talk about saturday and sunday okay so yes. saturday and sunday um we have the three main stages there's steinbeck park which will have a, a large main stage over there. That's um, that's the LA, the WLIW stage. Then we have the Provisions Tent that is in Marine Park with the stage. And I just want to interject there. I did think you did mention Provisions has been with you from the onset. Oh, from the onset, that, yes. So kudos yeah. to Provisions. Thank yeah. you. Yes. yes. Yeah, Rich and everyone there. I mean, they've been extremely supportive, and um, they're very community minded. And you were saying it's the community that brings this to life. So it's not about any one person. It, it's a, like a living entity, the festival. Like we put out, you know, we hire the bands, we put everything in place, but the magic that happens on the street and the, the people that are making connections, like that is bringing the community together. Yes. Uh, Carrie and I and the board, we see it as a community development project, um, more like just as much as about music. Well, and even your cover art. Let's talk about oh. Barbara Maislin. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful cover. It's gorgeous. It's, yeah. it's gorgeous. I know, and I was telling you What a you talented earlier, artist and local to Sag Harbor. Local, yes, yeah, she's been here since the 90s, I believe. And her story, her um, statement is actually in our magazine, which came out in the Express uh, today, which is Thursday the 19th. I and uh, I read that you can possibly win that beautiful piece of art. The original artwork is actually yes. on display at Romney Cremoris Gallery, sure. which is on the other side of the alley next yes. to the American Hotel. And um, so she's already sold many raffles. So you can go there and get your raffles and at our merchandise stand at the festival. And then every year we raffle off the original artwork at the end. So for many years, Marianne Lucas, who is a former board member, mm -hmm. did our artwork for us for 11 years. Years, actually okay and her artwork is featured on our website if anyone's interested we focus on um, specific icons or iconic locations of and Santa where can Harbor. we find the is this in stores now before the event the yes yes this, you can find One. this pretty generally wherever you can find like a dance paper okay you know? great um, definitely great. because everyone you should really go out and get this paper because yeah. it talks about all the musicians bios yes. um, it speaks to the schedule. entire schedule it's phenomenal. It um, gives you sort of backstory and uh, all the sponsors, the sponsors, the, everything the restaurants, in and so it's in. It will be inserted into the Sag Harbor Express and the Southampton Press. Okay. So if you're, you know, a subscriber or picking up those papers, you'll get that inside. Otherwise, all of our sponsors and pretty much every store in Sag Harbor has a handful. So, Good. Good. Um, and we'll have them, of course, at the festival. But um, I would encourage you to look at it in advance because the we do a, a new act pretty much every half hour from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Um, on Saturday. And um, they, they're they interspersed between the locations. We have the three main stages, and then we have like Laura Liscano is playing at the Sag Harbor Inn, who okay. is one of, has been our official hotel sponsor from the very beginning. Thank you, Nat. And, um, you know, they house our musicians for us. And they have a beautiful location on the water. Oh, and it's wonderful. I didn't realize that you're housing all the musicians as well. Yeah. Sure. Just, the, now that the, I think about it, those, The, the ones that are coming in, you know, the big ones, right. like the Resilient will be there. Teddy Thompson will be there. And his Fantastic. band. Fantastic. You know, there's six members in his band and they've got five with the Resilient. So even right there, that's a lot because from what I've heard, Sag Harbor is pretty booked up right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's crazy. I mean, now, well, September is a beautiful month. As it, we is. Know, yeah. it is. It is. But They're again, very... 
15 years ago, it was a little quiet. Yes, so, yes. so it's nice to see how things have evolved. But even more so, it's nice to see how businesses have come to appreciate and hire more musicians throughout the year, particularly in Sag Harbor, but on the East End in general, I've noticed a real like surge of live music happening year round. You know, we really have like, we're fortunate to have like our own musical life out here. Um, certainly, absolutely. Certainly. So I encourage people- What a to, magnificent event. When they can get out there and support the, the musicians because they're not just, doing it for fun. Right. <laughs> it's right, a job. Right, right. It is a <laughs> it's job. It's a job. Like, they need to be paid. So, right. you know, let let them know. You and that's where the money them. is going. You are paying yes. the musicians. Yes, of course. We so. do. We pay the musicians and, um, you know, the we have a sound crew. I have to give a kudos to them. Uh, James Schott and his team. We've got like, I don't know, 15 people working in tandem for all to coordinate all the stages and the separate locations. Um, you know, we actually Breakwater Yacht Club is a new location oh, this oh, year. Nice. Oh, and Barron's Cove. I don't Barron's know if there's Cove, Cove which is a great spot. Great We've spot. We've been doing September Sundays with them uh, throughout the month of September, just sort of leading into the festival. And that's been really fun, um, featuring a lot of artists. So we have... Um, we have someone there on the Sunday of the festival. So yeah. Sunday, it starts at 10 as well. And um, we're starting out with a kid-themed Goat on a Boat. Yes, I was going to ask you about that, but that's great. But we yeah. are coming to a close. So yes. Goat on a Boat, which it's, should be... It's the opener on Sunday. And but the close? The closer is Alex Lucero Band coming from Santa Cruz. And they were oh, with us last year. They were like a surprise hit. People were like, who is that band? So come back and listen to them. Okay. And, yeah, fabulous artists all day Sunday. Great. Kelly? Thank you so much. Thank it's you. really been a pleasure, <laughs> honor to meet you. Yes. I look forward to seeing you more in hot yoga. Yes. <laughs> um, we look forward to the festival. We thank everyone that is supporting this festival and really monumental what you have done. Thank you. It really is monumental. It really, so kudos to you. I appreciate it. It brings so much joy to us and we hope it brings joy to everyone. Yes. And thank you to LTV. Thank you to Kate Cassidy Foundation. Music for the soul, everyone. <laughs> Kisses. Let the music play. Mwah. Question. Anybody gets what's going on Get your better tits up before all the hope is gone Do I